Five from Italia. I'm in Greece. Finally made it to Ia. Five from Spain. I'm, I'm in Bali. Five in San Trini, Greece. From a beautiful, amazing Tulum. practice self-discipline in an aligned way, especially when starting a business. I don't really believe in discipline. So, so many coaches, entrepreneurs are all about the hustle and waking up at 4 a.m. Oh my God. And I love that you're not like that, which doesn't feel aligned at all. But I also feel like I waste, I waste a ton of time because I'm not very disciplined and organized and get easily distracted. Me too. I procrastinate everything. I don't have a schedule. I definitely don't have like a bad time. I was writing e the emails that will go out tomorrow, that went out today and will go out tomorrow. I wrote last night before bed at like 1 a.m. Um, okay, I'm not disciplined and I don't really believe in discipline. And I think all it is, this is what it seems like to me. We're all told that if we're lazy and unstructured and unorganized and undisciplined, we can't make it. So then we go through our daily life and we do something that's lazy or procrastinator e or whatever. And then we go, oh, that means I can't make it. And then we're in an energy of not fucking making it. So now we're just living our life in a vibe of I can't make it because I'm unorganized. I can't make it because I'm unorganized. And instead, I just went, I'm gonna make it because that's who I fucking am. And I'm gonna make it and I'm gonna embrace every part of me. I'm gonna embrace unorganized me. I'm gonna embrace procrastinator me. I'm never gonna make it mean anything bad that I do everything at the last minute. I'm gonna let myself be fully who I am I'm going to be lazy sometimes. I'm going to waste time sometimes. I'm, what, I'm just going to do whatever the fuck I need to do to be me. And I'm going to let it all be enough. So that's one part is I don't, I didn't, I stopped judging myself and I stopped making up stories about what laziness and procrastination meant because it's all so much bullshit. At the same time, I do the fucking work. Like at the same time. I wrote the emails at 1 a.m. before bed because I wanted emails to go out today because I want people to hear about the holiday bundle. But I did not think about the emails at all, <laughs> at all, all day, until the point I wrote them. I didn't tell stories about them. I didn't dread them. I didn't make them mean anything. I didn't get out of the present moment because emails needed to be done. I just didn't, I don't know, I didn't think about it at all. And then at one point I was like, oh, emails need to go out tomorrow because <laughs> there's 48 hours left till the bundle closes. So then I wrote some emails. So my combine, so the perfect, I think, combo for me is don't make it about waking up at four in the morning. All I think happens is that people go, oh, now I'm waking up at five in the morning and drinking my bulletproof coffee and going to the gym and writing my affirmations and plunging in my cold pool. Now I'm allowed to make a lot of fucking money. Now I'm allowed to believe that I'm doing enough to receive. But all it was is that you finally believed it was enough. So I decided it was enough from the beginning. I was just like, I'm a procrastinator. I procrastinate the fuck out of everything. I'm gonna stop making that a bad thing. I'm gonna record my courses live. I'm gonna record my trainings live because that's the only way I know to not procrastinate is show up and do it live, right? And about being disorganized. Do you wanna see my room? Hold on. Do you see that pile of shit on the floor? Like over there, not over there. And um, I mean, I, I mean, I cleaned up this area for you guys. <laughs> but like, I'm not organized. I don't have a folder for my photo shoots. I can never find a picture for my fucking photo shoots when I need one. I don't have a folder for the graphics that we share on Instagram. I think someone on my team might, but I'm not really sure. I think Yumi has a Dropbox, but I actually have no idea. I'm 0% organized. The way I see what the email is that we sent out last year, if I need to reference it for this year, is going into my own personal inbox and typing in from Amanda Francis and then reading what email I wrote last year and pulling parts of it if I need parts of it. Are you understanding? There's not a lot of organization at all. I like, I do like to create structures when they work for me and the team. So when you have a team, it starts to get a little bit different because you have to go, okay, team member, when this happens, I want you to do this. And when, you know, when I release an offer, I want you to make an Insta story. When I post in the boss ladies group, I want you to copy and paste it to the fan page. You like, you tell people how to respond to you, but you tell them how to respond to you in the way you need to be the most. Does that make sense? So you do 
what you have to do for you and you let everyone you and then you let the other people's structures support you and you being your procrastinator disorganized sleep and hot mess self and you do it unapologetically and when you start doing it unapologetically it doesn't it just it doesn't matter if anyone thinks it's not the right way to be because it's the way you fucking are and it's working <laughs> so then you're like whatever people who say you have to wake up at 4 a.m and be exhausted not about that life so to me it's not about discipline it's just about desire and when you're doing what you want to fucking do like right now i'm selling the holiday bundle when you're doing what you really want to do you'll want to write the email you'll want to talk about it on facebook because it's what you want to fucking be doing basically and when you find yourself doing things you don't want to be doing anymore you get to think but what do i actually want more than this there is the question of who could I delegate this to and who could do this instead of me? That is sometimes the question. But a lot of times the question is, if I don't really want this thing I'm focusing on, what do I really want? Like what actually moves me? What, I, what do I feel passion in? What do I feel desire in? What would move me to action? And look at that. So while it would be true to say I'm a very hard worker, like I get my shit done, I don't beat myself up for waiting to the last minute being disorganized, sleeping in, working late at night, or whatever it is that I need to do to just be the most self-expressed, accepting of me. Yeah, the most self-expressed and accepting of me. We need to accept ourselves more. Like we need to up our motherfucking self-love of ourselves and who we are at this time and how we behave at this time and what we want at this time. I believe Carl Rogers, a very famous psychologist who I studied with abandon in grad school and undergrad, I just loved this man. Carl Rogers said, the curious paradox is when I accept myself exactly as I am, then I can change. And that's always been true for me. When I just let who I am be a fucking enough, period, and I'm not fighting myself, then there's a lot of space for growth and improvement. But when I'm saying that I'm bad, I'm wrong, I'm not doing it right, I don't have it together, it's not gonna work this way, and I'm operating from that energy and I'm creating more of that and I'm not living in self-acceptance, I'm just having, an, I'm just fighting with myself. There's just an internal battle going on with me and me. And that's not getting at any of us anywhere. So love yourself more, accept yourself more, don't believe the stories that it's the laziness, the procrastination, the lack of discipline, because I don't feel disciplined, I just feel like I like what I do, right? And I'm just willing to do what I know to do in the spiritual, in the energetics, and in the practical. I know spiritually and emotionally and mentally to look at my limiting beliefs, to look at what I believe I can and can't have, to look at my connection to myself and the divine. I, I'm willing to do that maintenance work. I know energetically to do the work of believing that I can have what I want and feeling the feelings of already having it to be an energetic match for it. And practically, I know you have to tell the people about your offers or they don't know about them. <laughs> so I tell them on the internet because that's where the humans are. And I'm the internet kind of entrepreneur who likes to tell everyone through the interweb so I can do it from anywhere, from my home or from a beach in Bali or from wherever the fuck I am at any given moment. I'll be in Prague in a few days. So I'm glad, I'm glad I'm not the only disorganized hot mess. I am the queen of disorganized hot mess and being successful anyway. And my hot messness has gone down quite a bit. Oh, low battery, hold on. My hot messness has gone down quite a bit like in the past year. But my hot mess state and my disorganized state decreased, not because I believed it was supposed to be successful, it just decreased as an act of self-love. There were areas where I was feeling more frantic than I wanted to feel, and I was like, how could I be less frantic? And it was by going a little bit more slower and feeling a little bit more organized. But it wasn't because you can't be successful without discipline. It was just because I don't like running out the door five minutes late on the way to my bar class every day when I could just choose to start getting ready earlier. Like it was more like that. Like what if I structured myself a little bit differently for self love, not for some limiting idea that I couldn't have something until I did something else. You know what I mean? Knowing you can have it is enough of a reason to get to have it.
So sometimes the biggest work is deciding that we're worthy and believing that we get to have it because we, we are enough. But it's knowing that we are enough because we are and knowing that the things we're doing are enough when we know they are. Get it? So knowing that you are enough because you are and the things that you are doing are enough when you know they are. Everyone feel me? Yes. I fully believe in writing our own permission slips. There is this great you. What are your thoughts on manifesting a man? I have thoughts. The current swipe, swipe right dating environment and culture seem to make it so hard to find and keep a man. Ooh, I don't even like the word keep a man. Like keep them like they're trying to get away and you're making them stay. Not saying that I have a problem with you saying it. I just don't like the, the vibe and the phrase that is often thrown around. And the older we get, the harder it seems to get. Oh, God. <laughs> All of this does not feel good. <laughs> What's your advice on navigating the dating scene and manifesting the man and love of your dreams? What I've been saying this whole time. That you get to have it because you do. You get to have it because you do. When I decided that ending up with a partner of my dreams was my ultimate destiny and birthright, regardless of anything... And that there was someone, and I, here, I'm going to say this first. There was someone who from the beginning of time was like perfectly created for me. That doesn't mean it's fucking perfect all the time, blah, 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 blah. We all know that stuff. But like, and it doesn't matter if you believe there's 50 people who could be the perfect match for you or one person. It doesn't matter what you, what belief system you fall into, like around soulmates and things. That's beside the point. When you know you that you get to have the thing that you want, whether it's the one right person or one of 10, I don't care, but whatever you believe that you can get to have that thing and you're living from the place of you will, you're just gonna have it no matter what. You are going to have it no matter what. And of course I've been playing with this energy for quite some time and getting better and better at it and talking to a coach about it and blah, blah, blah and all the things. But like as I live in it, I live in it more and more and it gets stronger and stronger. But from the moment that I decided that that was true, dating became so different. Dating became so fucking different. Because if you go on a date and you know you're ending up with the one no matter what, then it doesn't matter so much how the date goes. Just enjoy the date, right? And if someone does or doesn't text back, but you're ending up with the one you want, who the fuck cares? It's just a text. So, and it took all the pressure off and all the dating experiences got more fun, got more flowy. I got more self-expressed. I felt more like the real me. I enjoyed the encounters more from the place of knowing that I get to have the ultimate desire. But it's just like how I teach you to know and believe that you get to have the clients because you do and the right clients are always making their way to you. And when you know and believe that about clients, you stop putting pressure on every single person who reaches out to you about coaching, right? And when you're not putting pressure on them, because you know you're gonna make the money no matter what, you know you're gonna receive the clients no matter what, you're not putting pressure on individuals, then they have so much more freedom to feel drawn to your work, right? So then they just get to be drawn to your work and they get to come in naturally and there's no pressure, right? So, but it's the same thing. When you know what the desired outcome is and you know you will have the desired outcome, and there is not a chance in hell that you won't. There is, it is just outside the realm of possibility that Amanda Francis will not be with the person she is meant to be with that she desires. It is out, it is fully and completely impossible. I walked into dinner the other night and my friend was like, you have mom vibes. And I was like, mom vibes, tell me more. She's like, you'll be pregnant within the year. And I was like, slow down, <laughs> slow down. Um, that I'd like to be pregnant within, I, whatever, within this part of my life, not maybe within the air. The point being is as I believe into what I get to have and I'm a, as I'm a vibrational match for it and as I know it's my destiny reality, people can feel it, people can sense it, um, people treat you like you're... I don't know, I think the overall respect you receive increases because you're the kind of girl who's gonna get exactly what she wants and no one's fucking around with you. Even if you're not the ones for each other, there's a lot of like mutual respect and you're like short-term dating situations or whatever. So you get to have, you get to have it. 
And if you know you get to have it, then it doesn't matter. So, okay, let's get back to the question about like swiping and it all being hard. So if you know you get to have it because you fucking do, then it doesn't matter how many times you swipe left or swipe right. It doesn't matter if you go to this bar or that restaurant tonight. It doesn't matter if you smile at the guy at the gas station tomorrow or not. It just doesn't matter. You're going to receive it. And if you know you're going to receive it, then you're going to find yourself doing the right thing at the right time. It doesn't mean you have to kiss a lot of frogs. And it doesn't mean you have to go through a process of el elimination. And it doesn't mean it has to be a numbers game. It just means you get to know. And anything that helps you feel into the feelings of knowing is amazing. Completely. And anything and identifying every limiting belief around why you think you can't have it is amazing. My coach often will say to me, so, <laughs> how do you feel about your partner coming in now, or whatever word she says, like your person coming in now? And I'll be like, I feel good about it, like it's gonna happen. She'll be like, well, what in you feels like it's not going to happen? So we can just look at all the fucking limiting beliefs and identify them all as untrue. The same thing we've been saying all along for every single fucking thing in our life. So when you know you're gonna have it, and you're vibing with it, and you're taking all your actions from the place of knowing you're gonna have it, then all the pressure's off. You don't have to tell the story about it being hard. You don't have to worry about whether you're going to the right places, meeting the right people, whether you're open enough, or you self-expressed enough, or you feminine enough. You're just gonna have it because you are, and if some kind of work around femininity or self-expression needs to be done, you will be fucking led to it, but you'll be led to it because it's on the path of you getting where you're ultimately going. So the work is to always be an energetic match for where we're ultimately going, and anything else that needs to be sorted out or looked into or nipped and tucked along the way will occur because you know where you're going. So you don't have to waste your time going, but if I don't read these 12 books on relationships that so-and-so said, no, maybe you'll be led to one book or the other and it'll feel really good to read it because it's a line for you to read it because it's on the path of where you're going, but you don't get to get, get to have the man because you read the book. You got to have the man because you know you got to have the man. And that's how it feels to me.